When I was very young and lived in the West Riding in the early years of this century, the charge for tea in the farmhouses was sevenpence. No meat for that, of course, but almost everything else you wanted. For sevenpence each, they crowded their massive table tops with good things to eat. White bread, brown bread, plenty of jams, currant tea cakes, pasties, Eccles cakes rich with currants, custard tarts, various kinds of cake, and often too there'd be lettuce, tomatoes, watercress, mustard and cress, and perhaps a bowl of stewed fruit. You could walk over a moor with that curiously salty moorland air making you hungry, drop down into one of the little pubs or farmhouses, and then for sevenpence you could eat and drink yourself into a happy stupor. I can remember some of the very places that were our favourites. I can still smell the fine mixed reek of cows, ham and whitewash. I can still see the roses and sunflowers blazing along the little flagged paths. If I were not a family man, I would ask wistfully why the sun never shines now as it did then with such a golden fury of summer. But being a family man, I know that it does still shine as it did then, not for me, but for my children, who are now as I was then. For I hear them cry, gosh, I'm boiling, and suddenly see that vanished sunshine radiant about them. But though they know the same sun, they don't know the sevenpenny teas. Why, there isn't such a tea to be had now in the wide world. Politically, I'm a progressive, a socialist to be exact, but there are in me certain conservative streaks. I don't altogether despise the past, and by thunder, when I remember the sevenpenny teas and what they gave us and where they gave it to us, the people who served them and the people who ate them, or as much of them as could be eaten, for they were feasts and not balanced diets, mathematical helpings of calories, rations sufficient for good health, I say, when I remember all this, I glory in the past and despise the present. If such a tea were to be served tomorrow, there'd be coloured photographs of it in the picture papers, flashes of it on the newsreels, an outside broadcast picking up the sounds of ecstatic teeth crashing through Eccles cakes. The villages where we ate those teas hadn't then been ruined by motor transport. You could walk then and enjoy it. Beer was tuppence a pint and tobacco fourpence an ounce. And if you were tired of them, you could put ten golden sovereigns in your pocket, which is what I did more than once, decide which foreign country you wanted to visit and just go there, with no passports, no forms to fill in, no questions asked, no priorities, no standing in line. You just went. And that was something like civilization. No passports for abroad and glorious sevenpenny teas at home. I'm forever finding myself staring at and being irritated by silly articles called The Wonderful World of Tomorrow or something like that. In these articles, I'm told that very soon I should be able to go to New York in about two hours, probably delivered there in cellophane. The writers always assume that I want to go to New York, and anyhow I don't, and that I shan't be happy until I'm shot there in a rocket. But I want to enjoy myself here, and never mind about being flung round the world like an express parcel. If they want to devise a real wonder world of tomorrow for me, then they should bring out some real magic, and let me walk across Bailden Moor again, and arrive at Hawksworth to find little Miss Wilkinson, rosy as an apple, setting out a sevenpenny tea. You take New York, Hollywood, and cocktail bars in the stratosphere, and I'll take the poor ignorant world of 40 years ago and the little window with hollyhocks and honeysuckle outside and the sun lighting up a table rich with new brown tea cakes, watercress, mint and currant pasty, raspberries and cream. If it takes politics to do it, then we shall have to form a new party, the Sevenpenny Tea Party. The object of this party would be to bring us steadily back to the Sevenpenny Tea and its own sensible world. Its test question to be applied ruthlessly to socialist economists as well as to big business, to machinery worshippers, wonder worlders, both planners and crooks, would be, look here, are we going to enjoy this? Is it along the sevenpenny tea line or is it just some dusty nonsense of your own? 
Sometimes I feel that for years and years we've all been sleepwalking. What we need now is some real walking instead and the sevenpenny tea at the end of it. <laughs>